Action. Good afternoon, Professor Peach. Well, first of all, you've got Professor Peach. I need to check something in the library. Oh. Alone. Who doesn't make it through the opening titles? I say, what are you doing with that lead piping? Um, but, you know, somebody's got to be the first one to go. Oh! They know Lady Edison, the lady of the house. Forgive me, but who exactly might you be? And what are you doing here? Charming, genteel, mannered, society lady, but with a mysterious past. Oh, my God! Everyone's got a secret, which means everyone's got a motive, of course. That's traditional in a murder mystery. Action! My husband. <laughs> Then you have Colonel Hugh. Forgive me for not rising. Never been the same ever since that flu epidemic back in 18. Devoted, sociable, clubbable man, life and soul of the party. Don't give my wife ideas. Who is also harboring quite a major secret in that uh, he's been in a wheelchair for 20 odd years and doesn't need to be. Confounded, Mrs. Christie. How did you discover the truth? 45 take one, B come only. Then you have their son, Roger. My word. You are a super lady. Handsome, charming, with a great big secret staring you in the face that the doctor and Donna pick up on straight away. Typical. All the decent men are on the other bus. Then there's Davenport. Your usual, sir. Ah, thank you, Davenport. That's how I like it. The handsome, charming butler who might be a little bit too close to one of the family than he should be in 1926. Some of these young boys deserve a decent thrashing. Couldn't agree more, sir. We had to have the flapper character, of course, in the 1920s. Miss Redmond. Spiffing to meet you at last, my lady. So Miss Rabina Redmond is there. The charm of the London society, socialite, funny, wonderful, clever. Also, strangely, hiding a secret. <laughs> so she looks like a suspect early on, but actually is, is hiding a completely different layer of, of motives. Oh, all right, then. It's a fair cop. She's a, a scrubber from the East End who's stealing everybody's jewellery. Go on, then, your nose. Arrest me. Then you have uh, Reverend Golightly, of course. Ah, oh, Reverend. How are you? Charming and polite and honourable and decent. As the Christian fathers taught me, we must forgive them their trespasses. He's the biggest secret of them all, in that he turns into an alien wasp when nobody's looking. To stop me killing you all! That's probably the bit you wouldn't necessarily find in a traditional Agatha Christie novel. OK, turn it over, then, please. A camera only. There is a mysterious footman in disguise, creeping his way through the garden party, drawing attention to himself beautifully and subtly, that is, in fact, David Tennant's father, making a cameo appearance. 49, take one, A camera mark. Camera. I was coming down to visit David, and uh, I think they must have been short of someone, but they very kindly invited me to play the part of a footman. Sidecar, please. And a lime and soda, thank you. Which has been interesting, and I didn't have to learn any lines. So that was good news. <laughs> Hello, I'm the Doctor. How do you do? Now, my lady, where's this special guest you promised us? And finally, of course, in the house, the final guest you bring in is Agatha Christie herself. Here she is, a lady who needs no introduction. <laughs> No, no, please, don't. Miss Agatha Christie running away from her husband in 1926 in terrible circumstances. Thank you, Lady Edison. That's There's no need. Finding herself in a situation where the patterns of her own books are repeating around her. So what's going on? Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.